Hey guys, Gibbles here, and welcome to another video. So Jarvis Johnson recently made a video talking about really bad top 10 videos, specifically those made by a channel called The Richest. So I've seen tons of terrible, clickbaity top 10 videos in my recommended section, and I'm sure you have as well. So today, I'm going to be talking about some of them. The channel I'll be focusing on is called Most Amazing Top 10, which has over 6 million subscribers. If you want to see Jarvis's video on the riches, the link will be in the description. I'd highly recommend it. But anyway, let's get into the video. So while doing research, I found a video called Top 10 Scary Sculptures Caught Moving by the Most Amazing Top 10. The thumbnail implies that from 8am to 8pm, the sculpture Christ the Redeemer moved its hand up slightly. Uh, let's see if this happens in the video. Can, can you guess whether it does or not? Now sculptures are gorgeous. It blows my mind that people can make these creations with their hands. Like that raw artistic talent is just irreplaceable. I don't have it. I'm sorry. Either way, the good thing about sculptures is that they don't move. <laughs> the good thing about sculptures is that they don't move. It's the only good thing though. Not, not how they look, not what they represent or anything else. Just the fact that they don't move. Honestly, I think if a sculpture moved, it would make it even more impressive. Like, why is it a good thing that it doesn't move? Either way, the good thing about sculptures is that they don't move, or rather they shouldn't be moving. Like, it shouldn't be possible, and yet they do. I love how she says this like it's a normal thing. Like, sculpture shouldn't move, but they do, as if it's common knowledge. She says that the same way someone would say, bees technically shouldn't be able to fly, but they do. Like, that, they're not the same thing. Like, sculptures don't move, at least, I don't, I don't think they do. Right? Coming in at number 9 is The Haunting of Hill House. Now I didn't want to confine this list to just real life sculptures, so I decided to throw this easter egg in there as well. Wait, what? That's not fair. It's a movie. It doesn't count. The sculpture didn't actually move. It was like editing. <laughs> there were two different sculptures. They literally just replaced I don't understand how you can put something like that on a list like this. If you didn't have enough instances of sculptures moving, they just make it a top 5 instead of a top 10 instead of adding in like a stupid movie, one that doesn't even... <laughs> it doesn't even apply. Oh wow, a sculpture moved in a horror movie. It's not like... Thousands of horror movies have that exact same thing. Like, why not make a top thousand scary sculptures moving video with all of those? Either way, at the University of Cincinnati, there are two stone line sculptures standing outside McMicken Hall. Now, McMicken isn't a residence hall, it's strictly for classes and faculty members' offices. But with 21 departments operating inside of it, students are going in and out like nobody's business. Many, many students have reported hearing a growl at night, and clearly there's no rogue escaped lion near the campus, so it had to have come from the sculptures. Legend has it, or rather the students have speculated that the sculptures only move if a cheetah or a virgin walks past them. That's pretty weird, because if it only growled when a cheater or a virgin walked by, it will be growling a ton. Because chances are that when a crowd of students walks by, at least one of them is a virgin. It says that 25% of college students are virgins, so it would growl like a lot. If there was like a group of four people walking by, it would most likely growl. So it's not like people wouldn't know about that. It's not like, oh wow, every once in a while it just growls. No, it literally would growl every couple minutes. So I can't even show any of number one beats is a little bit SFW, so yeah, you can watch the video if you want. It's I, I don't want any risk being demonetized. So one weird thing about this channel is that they completely clickbait you, but in the actual video they act like they got clickbaited as well by their own video. They sometimes even say that they don't believe some of the things are real. So why put them in the video if you're gonna say it's fake? The channel seems to focus mostly on scary videos. But then, every once in a while, there's a video like this, which is just weird. I'm not going to be looking at that video. Instead, let's look at this one. Top 10 scary things left by demons. The title makes it seem like the demons is a normal part. Like, yeah, demons exist, but the problem is the scary things they leave. So the thumbnail is this cursed Garfield thing with Take It Back written on the screen. Let's see where this goes. Hey Most Amazing Top 10 family, I'm your host Che Arena, and welcome back to Most Amazing Top 10. When it comes to ghosts and demons, I would classify myself as someone who does not subscribe to those beliefs. This channel is honestly pretty smart. 
They clickbait you with these titles, but then clarify in the beginning that they don't believe in demons or whatever, so it makes it really hard to be mad at them. It seems like they aren't in charge of the title, thumbnail, or what's actually in the video, they're just commentating over it. They make it seem like they're not the ones clickbaiting you, when in reality, they are. At number 4 we have curse words. It only makes sense that we follow curses with curse words. Apparently a lot of horrible things that we spew out of our mouths every day come from demons. <laughs> Are you saying swears were left behind by demons? <laughs> swears were left behind by demons? <laughs> so a demon just came to her and was like, Hey, guys, I have some swears. Here you go. <laughs> Something cool about this guy is he would appear in front of you as an old dude riding a crocodile. I would totally get tricked by this. Some old man on a croc rides up to you and he's like, hey, you wanna swear in every language? I'd be like, yes dude, what's your Instagram? You're saying that you'd be tricked by an old guy riding a crocodile? How? What would make you talk to him instead of running? Like, if it were just the old guy, sure, I'd talk to him unless he was like being creepy. But a crocodile? If I saw a crocodile, I'm running, and I'm definitely running if there's an old guy riding it. Okay, the rest of the video is just really boring, as if the rest of it wasn't. But the worst part is that the Garfield thing wasn't even in the video at all. It was just in the thumbnail, which makes me mad, because I wanted to see this guy talk about a Garfield stuffed animal. Also, while scrolling through their channel, I saw that they upload around two to three times a day, which is absolutely insane. However, it's not like it's just one guy pumping out two or three videos a day. There are at least four people who make videos for the channel, so at least people take some time on them. How about we look at an amazing looking video? Top 10 Scary YouTube Rewind 2019 Predictions YouTube Rewind 2019 has already come out, and it was pretty scary. So let's see what predictions there are. My number 10 prediction is that they won't give creators appropriate amounts of screen time. Last year, right off the bat, they gave Will Smith 20 seconds, just right off the bat, and then another six seconds or so at the tail end. There were others that appeared for only about two seconds, maybe let's say two to five, let's give it a stretch. And then during the In My Feelings challenge, at that point, during that little montage, some people got less than a full second. And at that point, are you really even in the video? <laughs> Wow, that's, that's really scary, not giving creators enough screen time. Also, Will Smith does have a YouTube channel. He is a YouTuber. He makes content for YouTube. Sure, he's better known as an actor, but he's still a YouTuber. Let's look at my number nine prediction. It won't include your favorite YouTubers. First, that isn't a scary thing. Second, it's really hard to get everyone's favorite YouTubers in one video. There's so many creators, and there's no way to have every YouTuber in it, even if they only had ones with over a million subscribers. That would be so many. Like, there's no way that you'd be able to get everyone's favorite YouTuber in it. Like, you can't satisfy everyone with that. And now my number eight prediction. Uh, we know it will include people you don't want to see. Jake Paul, Logan Paul. Also, if they celebrate the faked marriages on YouTube, like, it's Jana, it's not real. Like, at that point, I feel like they would have to pay to be in it for self-promo, but they just might be in it. Jake Paul was in last year, and I, and let's think, like, Jojo Siwa, I, it's okay if she's in it, but I feel like she'll be, like, in the front of a dance sequence where I feel like she deserves a little bit to the left. You're great, but, like, mm. Oh my god, this literally contradicts what you said in the last one. Your least favorite YouTubers are someone else's favorite YouTubers. Even though Logan Paul and Jake Paul are widely hated, there are still a lot of people who are fans. They have like 20 million subscribers each. And sure, a lot of them don't even watch their videos, but there's still probably at least 5 or 6 million fans of both of them. So what about them? If Logan and Jake Paul aren't in it, then their favorite YouTubers aren't in it. But if they are in it, then your least favorite YouTubers are in it. Like... <laughs> That, that doesn't even make sense. Which one do you want? Do you want your favorite YouTubers or not your least favorite YouTubers? Number three prediction. They are gonna avoid their scandals. And of course, it's all in good PR, optics, all of that. I think they are going to try to cover up their scandals, not the fact that they're gonna avoid them. They're gonna try to cover them up. I predict that they will try to promote YouTube Kids and then propagate it as the new and improved. Let's just gloss over the YouTube Kids scandal, right? You know, they could even, like this is just a little more out there. They could even just make an entirely separate YouTube Rewind just for kids, so it can be on the kids one, so that they feel safe. Wait, what? Why would you put a scandal you were involved in in your own year-end video? Sure, that was like a part of last year, but covering it up isn't an insane thing. It's not like you want everyone to know about it. It's like, it's not supposed to be 
a very depressing thing. Like, that's like, hey guys, look at all we accomplished this year. Also, we were involved in a scandal. <laughs> like, that just doesn't make sense. On to my number two prediction. Dislikes, likes, and comments are gonna be disabled. So if you read the comments from last year's video, you will see that this isn't an idea that's entirely out of the question. YouTube got so much flack after the last one that I just wouldn't be surprised if they disabled comments to curb some of the hate that they could receive on this one. They are really bound to get a lot of criticism after the wreck that was last year's. People will be looking for any mistakes. You really think that they'll disable comments? That is really stupid. Like, they don't care what people think. It's not like they got offended by the comments. Like, oh wow, people hate our video. <laughs> okay. The YouTubers in YouTube Rewind 2018 were probably more offended by the comments than the actual team at YouTube. Like, YouTube doesn't care about that. And also, disabling comments would make them look even worse. Like, if they disabled comments, like, imagine how much backlash they'd get. Like, wow, well, you can't even deal with any criticism. Like, I do think that there's way too much criticism on YouTube Rewind. Like, sure, 2018 was pretty bad, and 2019 was eh, but I don't think there should be that much criticism. But still, they're not gonna disable comments. Also, it, it, it came out and comments are not disabled, so... <laughs> I'm right. So that video is just a really weird concept and not very well executed. None of it was scary. But since the channel is focused around scary things, they had to brand it as a scary video with the title and the music. And not to mention the thumbnail, which I haven't even shown you yet for a reason. So on the right of the thumbnail, we have PewDiePie just crossed out, obviously implying that he won't be in Rewind. So that applies to the thing where it's like, your favorite YouTubers won't be in it. So, that makes sense, that applies to the video. How about the left side? Before I show you, make a guess what is on the left side of the thumbnail. Maybe something else mentioned in the video, like comments being disabled? Something like that? Something that would make sense? Nope! <laughs> Baby Yoda being shot! <laughs> so, so they're just gonna shoot Baby Yoda in a rewind video? That didn't even happen this year, so why would it be there? The thumbnail is honestly the most confusing part of the video so far. This entire channel is honestly really hard to grasp. The narrators aren't bad at their job. The scripts actually sound pretty natural, if it's even scripted at all, honestly. I wouldn't be surprised if it was just like a first reactions thing or they were just talking about the image. Like, they obviously did some research before, just so they didn't sound that dumb. But the scripts and the narration are pretty good. However, the thumbnails and titles and like concepts of the videos are just terrible. It's like these people who can do their job pretty well were given really bad subject matters to make videos on, and then someone else made the thumbnails and titles. I also just came upon this video. I won't be going through it though, but it's called the scariest TikTok. I won't be going through it. I won't be going through it, but it's called the scariest Tik. I also just came upon this video. I won't be going through it, but it's called the scariest TikToks of the decade. Well, TikTok wasn't even around for like 85% of the decade, so they just made the video before the- And they even made the video before the decade ended, so that makes no sense. Anyway, <laughs> that's all I have to say about this channel. Honestly, it's not the worst channel. There's definitely worse top 10 channels, but this one's just confusing. Like, they have to brand everything as scary, put that music, but like, <laughs> none of it really is all that scary. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.